Hey guys, Ru here with another bit for Blender. This is part three of chill modeling with hop scatter. So let's finish this bugger. I'm I don't know if I'm gonna finish it, but I'm gonna do something about it. So we need a monitor, right? So I was thinking that you know we could create something here, right, uh, in the middle, you know, sort of sticking out, but it's gonna be a bit boring. So we're gonna do something a bit more creative. Okay, we're gonna run it from here down. Just two words before we start, guys. There is a Patreon for Blender Bros, where we are together with Josh. Amazing tiers, tutorials, two of them. Each month, decal packs, critiques, all kinds of cool stuff. Really cool ship design coming next month on February. So check us out. Link in the description. Um, so let's try this, shall we? Um, let's uh, let's rip it off. So when you want to rip off faces very easily um, it, with hard ops, you can just go to Q and Control click click on Curve Extract, which is going to do something like this. So I Shift D and P to its own selection, basically. Now let's uh, let's move this origin point back up here. So Shift S into Geo and just scale this and maybe let's scale it out as well and then select these go to side view orthographic and now you can do is you can actually right click hold the control and it's going to extrude it like this okay so uh we can click somewhere here wait a minute let's just maybe extrude it a little bit and then start clicking shall we Ah, it's going to do something like this. Uh, probably it's not scaled. Wait a minute. Let's just apply scale. There we go. Let's try again. Um, yeah, it's better. Scale is always messing things up. Let's kind of align this more or less here like this. How is this going to look? It's a bit too thick to be honest. But um, what we could do is split this with Ctrl B. Select this one uh, in face mode. Ctrl plus. And then scale it, but when you scale it, press Shift S, uh, sorry, Shift X, so you're gonna scale it on, or maybe even Shift Y. Yeah, so you're gonna scale it on all the axes except for um, Y axis. In fact, you know what, maybe Shift X is gonna be a bit, a bit better. And then S, Y. How are we looking? Yeah, that's retarded. I don't like it. Um... Okay, screw it. We're gonna do it with an angon. So press D, um, angon. Turn off this cyclic mode, and now we can actually draw. Make sure everything is deselected. So press A twice or Alt A. But if you're using machine tools, you're gonna have to press Alt uh, A twice because Alt A is uh, um, is the alignment tool. So press A twice so everything is deselected, and then we're gonna draw from here like this and like this and click and then we're going to um, extrude it here and shift click to bring it to life and G and Y and move it here in fact we can move it to the cursor which is in the middle of this geo so shift S and move it to um, cursor and then move it outside so you you make sure this way that you know it's in the middle of your um, of your object. It's a little bit too thin, so probably gonna have to make it a bit thicker. So go to modifier, solidification, and solidify this a little bit. It's a bit too big, so probably gonna have to cut it. So go to box and slice it, and we got ourselves a cool monitor. Well, it's a little bit too uh, uh, maybe too thick. In fact, let's grab an angle and slice it like this. Uh, it's gonna be cool, so it's gonna straight, you see. And um, we can have some fun here, so uh, we can do it with Angon, you know, do something like this, for example. And uh, uh, press X and mirror it. That's pretty cool. Uh, this can, this one could be a bit thicker. Uh, this one could be actually curved, so you can go to Tab and click on Occlude, and Alt click this edge and Control B. And scroll, and you're gonna get this kind of a cool shape. And this kind of could be angular, sort of corresponding with the back angular, and this one is curved, corresponding with the front. 
Or you could make it angular too, it doesn't matter really. Um, let's go with control sharp and so just gonna apply this thing. Let's go out of this mode here. Um, you have this kind of overlap here because of a mirror. Because if you go here to your control tilde menu, you see we have a mirror active here. So we can actually apply it. So um, you can go to operations and smart apply. And then we're gonna grab these faces, two of them. And we're gonna G, X and move them in here. To create this kind of like a you know thicker um, uh, kind of a back uh, let's unmark it so click on mark and we're going to bevel this in fact if we do this we probably might have to bevel this one as well although you know what it kind of looks cool one of them bevel one of them not i think i kind of like this uh, we might actually move this a little bit closer here also this monitor is probably a little bit too uh, maybe too deep, um, I mean, sorry, too too far out, maybe not, maybe it's okay. Uh, let's grab these edges, uh, two of them with shift, control B, and, uh, you know, let's bevel them, so it's going to be something like that. Let's bevel this, the whole thing, and let's wait it normal, so, so alt click on sharpen. The bevel is a bit too crazy, so make it a bit smaller. What we can do is run a, a chamfer here. Uh, on this one, I think it's gonna look pretty cool. So, control B and scroll the mouse, and boom, as your chamfer looks awesome. Now, we can have some monitor in here on two or two monitors, doesn't matter really. Um, let's just you know, inset this, inset this one more time, just a little bit, and grab this edge with Alt here, this whole loop. And go to Control Macro and Alt click it and move your mouse to the left holding Shift. This will in you know drop this edge. Now you see this um, double edge here. That's basically um, when your bevel is overshooting. If I click on the bevel and press a Z, you will see that the bevel literally overshoots on its own. You see here. So you gotta make sure that the bevels meet. Um, there's a space between them. See. When they start overshooting, that's what happens. Okay, so when you see something like that, usually, um, you know, it's um, what the hell happened. Usually, it's the um, it's a bevel issue. Come on, there we go. I think I turned off the visibility of it. Yeah, that will do. So we got this kind of a panel. I think it's a bit too thick, though. Um, might be a bit too thick. Alt V cavity. Let me see that. Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. I'm not crazy about these kind of corner edges here. You know what? We, we, we just alt Z that. And we're going to do it differently, okay? We're going to just grab a box, right? And we're going to switch to object um, orientation. So shift V object. Hold control. And now you can, you know, draw this um, rectangle here. We're going to press B for bevel and, you know, drop something like that. Um, drop it in like this. Press T for solidification, scale it down a bit. And I think this is going to be much more interesting, kind of like a touch pad thing. Uh, let's apply this. So control sharpen and control L, P to its own selection. And we can drop this bevel a bit lower. So you got two different bevels on it, which is great. Um, kind of like a you know embedded touchpad, you know whatnot. Looks cool. Looks cool. Now, the top here could have some kind of uh, piping or exhaust or whatnot. We could actually cut two of them at the same time, so you could you can cut two mo uh, objects with two or more objects with the um, hard ups. We're gonna um, you know drop it in the middle here with control. We're still using the uh, the snap. We are in orthographic view, so it might not be uh, ideal, but it should work. So let's grab it here and drop it down. Press E and move it up. And this will cut both. Press T for solidification. And we're going to get something like this, okay? So, Shift 2. Nice. Now we got some problems here um, with sh shading. Uh, because probably... 
uh, this cut is connected all the way to this corner. So if we're going to sharpen it, oh no, it's not. Interesting, what the hell is this? Ah, these are not sharpened. I mean beveled, so mark them, boom, sorted. Okay, now let's grab this thing in the middle, right? So control L, whoa, okay, then, then this one. Um, this one is not applied yet, so sharpen and sharpen. So now let's grab this one, control L and control X, which will delete this thing in the middle. What the hell is this? Let's just remove them. Perfect. Now we're left with this, you know, this bit here. So select that, control L, P, and we're going to have fun with this one. So select all these buggers, press F to clean that, and we're going to G, Z. So it's out, um, you know, chamfer this a little bit and create something like this here. Uh, drop it down a little bit and what's going on here some double edge let's just remove it um, dissolve edge and this one too these are lines connecting lines from um, that if you go to local mode right these are connecting lines from this uh, um, the, the edges that you know gonna hold the ship um, in fact we don't what the fuck has happened here Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's a messed up bevel. I mean, we don't really need to worry about that because we don't see that, but uh, um, normally um, th this is, you know, not an ideal situation here. Probably this could be fixed with machine, uh, mesh machine, let's see. Let's just uh, select this whole corner here and go to uh, unbevel, yep, and then let's go to unchamfer. That didn't work. We're probably gonna have to clean these, um, unfortunately. This should be straight if we want this to work, which means we would need to delete all these faces, right? This one included, right? And then, well, this one is curved, but we could easily fix it by removing the face and then simply, um, you know, pressing F. And then we will need to connect these, right? So this is not a problem. We just draw a triangle here. And now all we need to do is simply uh, uh, sharpen this. So select it and sharpen, which will fix the corners. And now I think we should be able to um, unchamfer this. So unchamfer. There we go. Fixed. And that's mesh machine for you guys it's pretty powerful stuff actually so now let me see now we can just run the sharpen on this one and this one is fixed perfect and then all you need to do is literally symmetrize it so symmetry and to the other side i remove the middle and the middle edge just make sure you see that's a problem make sure when you do that you don't delete the supporting edges um you know of a circular shape because this will distort the um, the curvature. We don't, by the way, need this edge because this one was um, um, a remnant edge from cutting this panel in the back. But now we fix this, you see, so we can run a proper bevel here, uh, like that, okay? So, if we wanted to, right? Or we can run a chamfer, like this. So, a machine, you know, mesh machine is a very useful add-on and... Uh, I highly recommend you guys, you know, give it a um, give it a go. It's a bit expensive, but it's actually worth it. There are quite, you know, quite a lot of powerful tools um, that it offers. Okay, so let's go here. By the way, let's save it. <coughs> let's go here with D and grab a box and let's maybe create some kind of a cool design here, just a little bit. Uh, Alt X, X to reset the mirror because it's on symmetry and copy this is going to make it a bit lighter in form, which is great. You could drop some notches in here as well, just for fun. So select that and, you know, uh, maybe that's a bit too big, but uh, kind of like a small notch, which we're going to be problematic because of, of the bevel size, but we can, you know, always change the bevel size. Or what we could do is simply uh, click on this, uh, on this... Uh, monitor and go to operations and or is it mesh tools 
Wait, 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 wait. Um, step here. And you click on step. What step will do is with, uh, introduce a second bevel, okay? And the second bevel is going to be the half size of the of the original bevel. So now you can control two bevels, you see. You got the bevel, um, the, the main... Let me select this one. The main bevel, okay? So, uh, sorry, the small bevel here. And then when you press Q, you can adjust the other bevel. So you can have two size of you know two size bevels uh, running on um, on this object, okay? Which is great because now I can make this really thin and kind of you know um, very detailed in terms of bevels, and this one's kind of soft and supple. So you got two kind of elements running on in here. So if we, for example, go here and recover this cutter, right? And shift it to uh, to slash or whatever, and let's say you know maybe bevel these or chamfer these. And you can have some really cool shapes going on in here. So let's sharpen this one. Now, when you do this, right? Uh, you need to remember now that you got two bevels going on. Now, if you run, for example, smart apply on this, right? What it will do? It will apply the first bevel, but the second one's gonna be live. Okay. So the first bevel was running on the main shape, which is just unimportant here. So you're gonna end up with something like this, which is great. So you know you can you can keep modeling here and have fun. Let's just remove this snub dots because they're probably gonna cause a problem. Now, if you see that kind of a misalignment with the shape, let's just move the um, origin to geo, and this could be caused by the size of it because we are now in a really tiny scale, guys. Okay. This is, you know, this is a default cube, so these cuts here, they're just tiny. And sometimes, occasionally, when the cuts are so small, you know, um, just Blender gives up, okay? So you gotta be, gotta be careful. Uh, cuts like this, you know, on the, on the bevel, you might be careful. If you wanna run cuts like this, you might want to run some security loops or something. But basically, an easier, easier, easier thing to do is just simply move, you know, um, move the cutter a little bit up, yeah, so outside the bevel area and everything's going to be peachy. Uh, you can copy this to the other side, so it's a bit more interesting and, you know, we got this kind of a thing, which is pretty cool. So these small details, you know, they go a long way and uh, they're kind of fun. Um, here we could have some maybe frame underneath, I would say. Uh, we could grab this uh, Thing in the, in the bottom so you know control click on curve extract and G Z Z and this will not work fascinate so let's create a custom orientation here uh, select the face and press press plus and then G Z and Bob Jankel let's move it in here a little bit more so G Z there we go now let's switch it back before you forget because it usually causes problems. So what we can do now is select all these and shift one, select all these, shift one, and we can drop them down. So G Z. Ah, switch back to our custom orientation. I think it's this one. G Z. There we go. Oh, sorry, not G Z. Easy. That's what I want to do. And uh, let's move them up a bit. So G Z. A bit here and then E X and move them across and then we're gonna copy this to the other side which didn't work for some reason X and boom there we go now let's grab this one and let's have fun here let's remove these faces then so on the faces and then this edge should work boom Right, and then we're gonna copy this. Okay, fast, fantastic. Remove this edge as well because we don't need it. We don't need this one too. Select everything and unmark it. And then we're going to apply scale with Control A. We're gonna grab these. Oh, these ones we don't need them. We can press three to clean them. Ah, oh, this is not gonna work. Grab these and connect them with machine. Pressing one. Select these and you know, just. Shift Control B them three one three is you know verts are in, uh, is enough don't need more you don't need this edge either it's just gonna be additional geo that we don't need so we're gonna 
uh, mirror this to the other side so alt x and mirror that didn't work so we're gonna press d and go for symmetry there we go and let's just go to uh, mesh tools and uh, where is it curve extract this one uh, do that and maybe press s to smooth it now it's a little bit too you know too white so we can still use the um or a local orientation i mean not the local the custom one let's separate this so ctrl l and split it select both shift s and origin to geo so they're gonna get origin assigned to them and now what we can do is just move them uh, one by one so g x oh, sorry y move it in here can delete this we don't need it and g y move it a bit here okay select both and control 2 and you know this should work we can move them up a bit so g z some like that um cool i think a little bit more g z there we go all right cool awesome so we got this going on now we need to fix this one right so we'll gotta do something with it so we're going to you know extrude it down we're going to remove this unnecessary edge and select this one Control b to make a chamfer um inset this a little bit with i and then e to extrude it and you know chamfer again what we're gonna do here is we're gonna probably run a cube liberator so let's grab a mesh and grab a cube move this cube on uh, let's switch this transformation gx and maybe um you know let's change the pivot point to individual origins sx and s shift x so you're gonna scale it on every single axis except x and create kind of like a wall piece here and what we're gonna do is uh if you have cable narrator you're gonna press shift alt c and create cable you're gonna select this and this and you're done so if you don't have a cable narrator get it because it's amazing and uh, we're gonna scale it a bit and just um you can press d to adjust the tension as well so g z and drop it down and we good to go all right awesome um this wall we could just drop some something like this here maybe one more on um on the, in the middle and control b this like that and grab this face and e to move it outside and maybe you know apply scale to it and then grab this edge and maybe control b to do something like this um so there is this you know kind of a uh, background uh we can slush it so uh, hold shift and click and gz and move it a bit down here we can apply this sharpen and what we could do is grab this bit here in fact connect these two with j and grab this face and um, shift click on curve extract to drop it down and then sharpen grab this bit right connect it with f and e and you got a floor okay so we got this going on let's drop some bevel here and weighted normals and we're good to go we could drop some something something here so let's uh maybe grab a circle and you know press t for solidification and let's go to front view and move it somewhere here and maybe a, not beveled um maybe apply it and then grab this extrude it you know control b to scale it and inset it like that and we got this going on so we can grab this cable now and we can actually adjust it okay so g 
G and just move it here in the middle so it kind of fits. Um, like that. Okay. Awesome. So it's not kind of boring and straight. It's kind of curved. Sweet. So we got this thing going on. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, if you need hard ops and box cutter or mesh machine, links in the video description. The cablerator links as well. And this cablerator add-on is amazing. We're gonna kind of expand on this one in the next video. Uh, by the way, if you don't have a cablerator, you just create cables the same way as I created the plane. I mean the uh, the cable uh, the pipes here from the plane. So you can just simply you know um, create this kind of a shape and with verts and then apply um, the curve extract to it from hard ups. The same tool really. So you can see that it's the same tool. It's just quicker because you can point uh, from which point to which point you want a cable. And uh, they're a bit more supple. To, they look more like a cable rather than a pipe. Like a rubberish thing. So cablerator is amazing. And we're gonna use some other tools of this add-on in the next video probably to make this cable a bit more interesting. So thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.